Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. Sorry to make you guys wait for a few minutes, um, but this is our Monday night Q&A, uh, and it's always great to be on with you each week. We're testing out some new back-end technology that hopefully, it's only half working tonight, but hopefully is going to make it where I can pull in all the comments on my side so that I can see everything, because it's really hard to keep track of Facebook and um and YouTube and all of that all at one time. Um, so I wanted to make sure it would work and you guys got to look at a holding screen uh, rather than me find out, you know, and sit here and struggle for 10 minutes because we've had those nights. Most of you know that. So we are going to talk about how to save money on meat and produce. They're two of the biggest things um, that we rarely see coupons for. I was going through and grabbing some coupons today um, as I went out to Publix and you know, it's a rare moment. Anytime that you find coupons for me, this wasn't even on my list. I'm like, I should cut that because then it's with me and who knows? Uh, they're just rare. They don't happen. Uh, but there are ways to save on meat and produce. So that's what I want to talk about tonight, along with any questions that you guys have, um, saving money, couponing, the sky's the limit. I am cool with whatever. Let's stick in the money saving uh, category. How about that? But whatever your questions might be. Um, so always glad to help you on any topic, though. I promise off topic is okay. So I'm going to dive into produce, though. If you do have a question, leave it in the comments. I will see it or my husband will see it. And between the two of us, um, we will hopefully get it answered uh, and we will you know, not miss it. Now, if I do, just ask it again, <laughs> and that will help. Uh, you know, you can, you can be demanding. I do not mind. Uh, so in all honesty, saving on meat and produce, the biggest tip I can give you is that most of our prices in the grocery store are really not that great. So to save the most money, honestly, you need to get out of the grocery store. I'm not going to get the best deal possible nine times out of 10 in the grocery store. I'm going to get it buying locally, buying in bulk, um, you know, maybe even Aldi for some of you. I'm not a huge Aldi produce fan because it doesn't last a long time, but it's not usually the grocery store. And the same applies for meat. Um, buying in bulk, buying local can always beat that grocery store price um, that they will try to tell you time and time again is a good price. And and it's really not. So we're going to pick on Publix this week. It's kind of whatever ad I happen to have handy. Uh, and the big thing for them uh, is when you're looking in their produce section, they will have some BOGOs. And BOGOs are a decent price. You know, we always have our little dots. Whatever store you're looking at, you, you get used to their promotional models. But beyond our BOGOs, you maybe four of these things end up actually being a decent price and the rest of them are really overpriced. So I don't want to go just saying, oh, it's in the weekly ad. Let me grab these items. That doesn't actually mean anything. Uh, but one big tip, and I've shared this before on other videos, use, let's see if I can line this up. Um, woo, come on, buddy. Use the math that they give you. So I don't know if you can see that, but right there, the bottom line in Publix, it's green. It's okay if you can't read it, um, but that's the math line. That's telling you how much you're saving. So in my area, baby cut carrots this week are on sale. I grabbed some today for 99 cents um, for a bag. That's a good price. They're normally almost a buck 99, depends on your store. Um, they're saying you're saving 80 cents, so a buck. Um, 79 in my store. Not all of you have this price. So Publix has gotten a little tricky here lately and their produce prices are definitely differing um, by region. So hopefully you've got 99 cents, but some of you have $1.50, which isn't very fun. Um, so use the math to help you spot. The other thing that I would recommend is um, knowing what's in season. And guys, this is somewhat common sense for those of us who have been grocery shopping and kind of watching sales for a while. But some of us, if you're brand new, you don't remember when is apple season versus when is strawberry season. Um, so focusing on what is in season, I try to share a list each month um, of what you should buy this month. And we put the meats and the, oh, not meats, but vegetables and produce in that. Um, but focusing on, on in season is going to save a chunk. An example being, um, 
well, uh, this is kind of a, a strange one, but corn is 40 cents an ear right now. This actually isn't corn season. So it's not a bad price, but it's definitely not as cheap as we will see in the summer. Corn is ripe in the summer. Think about when you're driving through cornfields. Right now, they haven't even planted their cornfields. Um, so this is not, uh, they're saying it's Florida sweet corn. Uh, I don't know, maybe Miami, Florida sweet corn, but uh, even North Florida wouldn't have their corn in the ground yet. And I can say that I was born and raised in North Florida. It's still a little too chilly to have corn that's coming to harvest. Um, so you got to focus on that. A good tip to help you there is, um, uh, and I'm going to give you a shortened link for this, um, but if you go to uh, sew.savers, um, I'm not very good at typing and talking at the same time, but um, so.savers.me slash market. Um, I'm sticking that in the chat now, so hopefully you'll see it. Uh, but if you go to that shortened link um, after the video, it will take you to the USDA's website that tracks the federal farmer's market here in Columbia, South Carolina, which is where I live. Uh, I know that you guys aren't all in the Columbia area. The point of going there is that it's going to show you um, what is actually on sale today. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. Uh, and it's, to me, it reminds me of like the 1980s and somebody is still putting this together on a dot matrix printer. Um, but with this report, I am able to see what's in season, what is right now at the farmer's market. So you may not be headed to the Columbia market. You may be hundreds of miles from us, but you're definitely going to get a really clear picture of what the current prices are at the federal markets and what's in season. Now, keep in mind, some of the things on this list are from out of country, and they do um, state that. So you see out-of-state produce um, and the out-of-state produce being listed below. So that's everything that's not coming from South Carolina. Um, but you've got a lot of um, a lot of things here that would be as well. So it gives you an idea of what's in season um, and what that going price is for those items. So to give you how this compares to the grocery store, uh, let's look at corn here. So corn in Publix is on sale for 40 cents an ear or corn, and I know this is really tiny on y'all's screen, um, and I can make it a tiny bit bigger, but eventually it gets too big even for the screen we're looking at. So this says uh, corn, four dozen ears of corn is currently going for between 14 and $15. Um, now guys, four dozen ears of corn, that's what fast math here, 48 ears of corn for $14, uh, that is not 40 cents an ear. So you, you get the idea. Um, at Publix, we're going to get five for uh, $2. So let's, you know, how many would 48 cost you in Publix? The point is, obviously, local and bulk whenever we can. Now, do you need 48 ears of corn? No, that's a lot of corn. Yes, you could put it up. It freezes great. You're going to spend a lot of time getting it in the freezer, though. Um, but you could totally do it, and that will probably last you a, a long time. Um, but just so you kind of see the price difference. That's really what I want to emphasize here, the price difference. Because there is a solution uh, where that doesn't require four or uh, 14 or however many ears of corn you're going to come home with. It, it's doable. Um, but that's one example. Another one, um, I wanted to see what it was currently at today. Uh, eight one-pound containers of strawberries uh, for 12 bucks. We're almost there. This is the start of strawberry season. We have a number of strawberry farms in South Carolina, right inside of our little area. And as I was driving home today, I saw the tent is up for one of them um, in our main shopping center, which it'll stay up um, a good month, month and a half. So it's fun to see that it's officially up, means the fields are ready. They're you pick fields, but they set up a tent so folks can come in too. Um, so this price, it's going to go even lower. The current prices, today's prices that's on this report, uh, today's prices, eight one pound containers for 12 bucks. We'll see this go lower than a dollar. At the federal market and that's just crazy you are never gonna find strawberries in the grocery store for less than a dollar 
Um, so, I mean, I could sit here and read this whole report to you, but you can pull it up yourself. So I stuck it in the links. Um, it's the shortened URL for it is so dot savers without any vowels dot me slash market. Uh, and you can get there. It's really a long USDA website. Um, and it is much easier to get there with the so savers link. Um, but hopefully this helps give you some ideas on what prices are. Uh, now to save some money here. No, you don't need um, four dozen ears of corn. I don't, I, I could probably handle eight pounds of strawberries. My kids could totally put that away, but there are other things that come in really huge packages. One of them, um, looking here, 40 pounds of, um, sweet jumbo onions for 23 bucks. I don't need 40 pounds of onions. So one of the biggest ways that you can save on produce is joining a co-op. And I share this a lot with y'all. This is how we buy most of our produce that we are part of a local co-op. But I encourage you to also find one in your area if you're not in my area. The one I'm in is um, a community co-op. Anyone's welcome to join. So I'll gladly um, stick a link to that. I should have pulled it up earlier. But the one that we're in is um, it really it's a Facebook page um, that we all just meet through and organize through. So the way that ours works, just to explain it, is that everyone pays um, $25.00. And that gets you a basket of produce this week at the at um, the farmer's market, basically. So I'm sticking in the link now. Um, and for our co-op, we bring a laundry basket, a big laundry basket, $25. And our laundry basket will be full. We, what we've done is then taken all that money, pooled it, and then bought that 50-pound bag of onions and the four dozen, really three cartons of four dozen corn because there's a lot of us in this co-op. And then we all come home with maybe six ears of corn and two pounds of onions and a five-pound bag of potatoes, but our basket will be completely full. So it's very doable sizes once you break it up. Now, I stuck in the link to mine, but it doesn't mean um, that you are near my area. That doesn't mean you don't have a co-op though. So hop on Google, Google's your friend tonight, and Google the name of your city and produce co-op or um, even the name of your county produce co-op. Another thing to Google is CSA Farm. So CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And a CSA farm is where you buy a share in that farm and you get um, whatever's fresh today at the farm. Um, so we have a big one in South Carolina, um, and I'm going to try to pull it up really quick if I can find the link to it. Um, so Pinckney's Produce is the big one in South Carolina, and um, you buy a share in Pinckney's Produce, and let's see, I did not mean it. Oh, there we are. There's their website. I managed to find their Facebook page before I found their website. Uh, you buy a share, you get a basket every week of whatever is on sale, and um, you are good to go. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe I didn't find the right thing because that website didn't work. It's been around for ages, though. If you're in South Carolina, Google Pinckney's Produce. They are everywhere. They've been everywhere for a while. There are a lot of other CSA farms that are out there, though. So the other thing that they're going to do is give you the option to buy a small, medium, or a large share. The difference between the two, a co-op and a CSA farm. A co-op, you may have a little bit more say in what you come home with. Not always. In our co-op, a very wonderful man does all the buying for us. He knows that people will grumble, so he's kind of learned things that people don't want. Um, but it doesn't mean I could walk in and be like, hey, I don't want this. We all get the same things in our basket. You can switch with people. That's very doable. But it's still going in your basket. And then you switch after the fact. A CSA farm. First off, you're not going to see anybody else. So there's no switching with other people. Uh, you're just going to go pick up your basket from a pickup site. But second, you don't have any say over whatever the farm grew that year, much less, um, you know, what's going to be in your basket. So we did a CSA farm years ago, picked up our basket week after week, and we were getting radishes and beets and I'm out. I don't, I don't want, I don't want those things. Um, but you don't really have a choice. So you need to find out before you sign up for a CSA farm. They're a great way to save money, but find out what they grow. <laughs> or you may be a little disappointed when you get your basket 
and it's not things that you like to eat. So just to, you know, keep that in mind before you dive in and get this huge basket and it's filled with things that you can't stand. Okay. Um, in terms of staying in season as well, um, if you go in the grocery store and you see something that's a pretty good price, grocery stores are not where you stock up on produce. So if you were thinking, you know, I don't want to go to the farmer's market, but I see that strawberries are $1.50 a container in the grocery store, I'll get some and freeze them. That is not what we want to do in the grocery store. Uh, a grocery store is a great place to go and get one container of strawberries or one bag of apples, um, but it is not a stock up moment because again, even that really great sale, even the BOGO sale, it is not going to come close to the price that you would pay at the farmer's market. So just to really emphasize that, one other thing to mention on farmer's market is to kind of clarify what I mean there because I don't mean um, the little corner stand. Um, I mean finding your county farmer's market or something larger, if you can, uh, that you're coming to and you're able to buy in bulk. So it's not going and saying, hey, let me buy this little basket of peaches. It's let me buy the basket with the big handle um, of peaches because the bigger size you get, the better price you're going to get on these items. Also consider that the guy that you're buying on that roadside stand from, he probably went to the really big farmer's market, bought in bulk, and is now reselling to you. Nine times out of ten, that's who you're dealing with. Um, when you're dealing with a roadside stand or a, a small farmer's market kind of setup, it's really people who are reselling. Um, so they got the much better price because they went to the farmer's market. They're then going to put it in little baskets and then try to sell that. So if you go into that setting, if that's your only option, then still pull up that market report that I stuck in the links and say, hey, I know that the going price on corn is 14 bucks for that big case right there um, and, and talk them down. So farmer's markets are, it's a haggling moment. You can talk them down. We don't like to do that, but you should, uh, and definitely make sure that you're getting a really good price. Now, the report, again, that I shared is for Columbia, um, but guys, anywhere in the Southeast, that price is really not that different. There is a report, if you go digging, and you're going to have to do some serious digging because I found that Columbia report, and to, for me to even go back and find the Atlanta one still takes me 20 minutes, and I kind of know what I'm looking for. Um, but there are reports, there are 19 federal markets across the country. Uh, in the South, there is one in Miami, one in Columbia, South Carolina, one in Atlanta, um, one in Missouri, and then, and I think one in Maryland, and that's it. And we get really spread out from there. So taking the prices from the Columbia markets probably incredibly accurate for your area. This is where Publix is buying their produce. It's where uh, the USDA is buying produce for the school systems, for everyone else that they are giving food to, um, and where you can. So just so you kind of know what a federal market is as well. Um, so that's a chunk on produce. Let me answer some questions and then we'll come back as well. I don't want to miss everybody's questions. Um, let's see. Uh, got a lot going tonight. Trying to move things around. Sorry, guys. Um, so an off-topic question, uh, Grace says, how many coupons will Bilo take per item? And how many coupons uh, will Bilo take in all for my whole transaction? Um, so Grace, Bilo is going to take one manufacturer's coupon and one store or competitor's coupon per item that you purchase. Um, it, it, the exception being if you had a coupon that was for a dollar off three cans of something, that's the coupon for all three items. Um, so you, you need to read the wording on the coupon. But if the coupon was like this guy, one dollar off of Oscar Mayer, I'm allowed one of these and one store or competitor if I had it on that one package of Oscar Mayer. They have a limit of like coupons that you can use um, per transaction, which I want to say their coupon policy is five. Um, but it's been a while since I read every single line of it and, um, max number of coupons that you can use per transaction. I don't think that you would, uh, exceed that. I think you're going to be fine. And, um, if anything, they're going to start to limit you on the quantity that they're going to want you to take home, um, before you would hit that. I think I I've never maxed out. I have had moments in every grocery store where you hit the max that the cashier was able to handle 
and it did require a manager to come and key in. Publix has that number. I think theirs is around 40. Um, Bilo also has that number. I wouldn't be surprised if it's also 40. Harris Teeter folks, you guys know if you're shopping super doubles and you save too much, that manager is going to have to come over too. It's just, it's just an automatic in the computer, but it doesn't mean that they stop you. It just means that they have to verify that you're doing things the right way, which is okay. You know, I don't mind. You can always come and visit me. Um, but we, we haven't been breaking any rules. Okay. What's a stock up price on boneless, skinless chicken breast? So Carrie, it kind of depends on where you're shopping. Um, so meat for me, uh, I do not buy in the grocery store ever. I buy in bulk. I, I, it's a sad day that Zaycon is gone. Um, that's what most of us are doing you know, a year ago now. It's, it's been gone. Uh, but we buy pretty much all of our meat from the chef's store. Going price at the chef's store, which is a restaurant supply store that anybody can shop at, going price for boneless, skinless chicken breasts is almost a dollar, a little less than a dollar a pound. Uh, they ran it on sale a couple of months ago for 59 cents a pound, but that's kind of my price. So in the grocery store though, if you're buying um, boneless, skinless chicken breasts in the grocery store, I would be aiming for between $1.79 and $1.99 a pound. That's the cheapest you're gonna see, period, on boneless, skinless chicken breasts. So it kind of depends on where you're shopping. Um, but that's the go-to price that I would have in the back of my mind because I know the chef store is going to beat it, but if they can't, if I'm out, then I'm looking for that $1.79 to $1.99 price. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So Rhonda, um, you're trying to save coupons to your CVS app. Um, I, with the CVS app, uh, let me pull this up. You open the app. Click on uh, coupons or the deals and rewards, and they should all be right there for you to just sit there and load um, kind of in any manner that makes you happy. Um, oh, look. Whoa, my beauty clubs are epic for sure. I've never had a beauty club that high. That's kind of fun. Um, yes, you can send that to my card. I don't quite know what I did to earn $17 in beauty club rewards. That is a massive amount of them. Um, that's all you're going to do though, Rhonda, is just send a card, send a card, send a card. So I may have missed um, what the issue was or what uh, the issue was that you were having. Um, but with this and loading them to your card, that's all I need to do. And then when I check out, they're just going to come off. So I don't have to do any work. I don't have to remember that they're there. Um, they're just automatically going to come off at the register. So these are all store coupons. And then as we go down, I have to go a long way. There we go. Um, these guys with pictures are all manufacturer's coupons. I can still load any of these that I want. Um, keep in mind, they're all going to only come off one time. So as you're loading them, uh, hopefully that answers your question. If you were trying to go paperless, which is everyone else's question a lot of times, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see my two black bars and one of them says get paper offers again. It lies. It doesn't really work that way. But you should have a bar that says go paperless if you are trying to do that. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question or not, but feel free to ask it again if that did not fully answer what you were wanting. Uh, so Carrie says, don't you have to get to the farmer's market really early to buy from the farmers? So yes, Carrie, from the farmers in our market. So again, we're at a federal market. That federal market, those farmers, they sell out. It's not that they like only want to work super early. They sell out usually by 8 a.m. Uh, and they have sold out to the resellers or to the grocery stores. Uh, and then you're done. So you do. You want to get to the farmer's market. I think they open like crack of dawn, 5 a.m. They're, they're super early. It might even be earlier than that. And you want to also bring cash. Um, they don't work, obviously, with cash when they're dealing with really big buyers. But when they're dealing with little guys, that makes them a lot more willing to haggle, possibly. So if I walk up and you're looking at a crate of strawberries, but they are all about to go bad. Um, you know, you maybe have a day, day and a half left on them. And they'll even tell you, like, oh, we pulled those out because they are a short sale or they're a... Um, maybe like a, um, a deal item is what we would always call them in our co-op. You can get a better price on them. It doesn't, you can talk them down. So uh, if you've got cash, that's very, very doable. So bring cash and go early. You're going to get some really good prices by doing that. Um, 
Oh, Wendy's asking, when's the next Harris Teeter Super Doubles? Uh, you know, Wendy, I've been a little out of it because I actually went to a conference this past week for half of the week. Um, but it should be uh, not this weekend, but next weekend. So it's always the first full weekend of the month. Um, so that's my expectation um, in dealing with everything. I have not seen it pop up as being this weekend, thankfully. Um, but next weekend is when I would expect it. So... Um, and that, yeah, it should line up fine. Sometimes when Easter messes with us, they'll move it around, but I don't think they're going to move it, um, with Easter being so late into April. Um, can you use Ibotta if you go paperless at CVS? So Kimberly, yes, going paperless does not mean that I don't get a paper receipt though. So there are two separate things with CVS and I don't even know if that was one of my, um, black bars down at the bottom. I still get a paper receipt. They are trying to push that, only getting an app receipt, and I have not selected that option uh, because I want to be able to still submit things um, to Ibotta. So just do not select that, op op that option, but going paperless is just going to make your coupons go paperless. That's really all that you want, uh, and you'll be good. You do get an email of your receipt, and I still get that but I still get a paper one as well. And I will say the email receipt, you could print and it, seriously, I don't have a receipt with me, but it's even the size of a receipt when it prints and it just kind of wastes paper on both sides. So I wouldn't be surprised if you did go paperless and you printed your receipt out that you couldn't still take pictures of that and submit it to Ibotta because it's going to fit in the frame even. Um, but I have not tried that since I still get a paper receipt. Just to clarify on that one before everybody, um, somebody yells at me that it didn't work. Um, but you do not have to get a, um, a paper, or you do not have to go to only paperless receipts. Okay, so Anna, I've not tried the new Fresh Farms. They did buy Zaycon's list. I have heard, however, from some people that they are not happy. Uh, I don't know any of the drama. I've just seen the drama, but I don't know firsthand any of the drama. So some folks are saying that it's from out of country. Some folks, I don't know. That's just all I've heard. But I'm one of those where I like people to iron out their kinks and their quirks before I jump in. Uh, and I'm the same way with mobile apps that are coupon apps and anything else. Like you just can figure that out and I will join you in a few more months. Uh, I do know, and this is for folks that are not in the Southeast, but if you've got family members that are in the Midwest and Northeast, trying to think Northwest, I have to think about my geography there. Um, a company that started out of Idaho and Utah right after Zacon went under, it was folks that were helping to kind of behind the scenes defer some of the drama of Zacon. They ended up seeing all the issues with that and creating their own company. So that one, I'm not 100% on the name, but I want to say that it's the Savvy Butcher. And you should look that one up. I actually know the people who own it. Um, sweet, sweet people, uh, and they are working with some of the same farms that Zacon was working and kind of trying to have that same mentality. They are not in the Southeast. They just hit Texas and only certain cities in Texas. So hopefully we'll see them come this way, but they're slowly building out. Um, so that's one to look up if you know folks that are on that side of the country. Um, the Savvy Butcher would be the one to look into um, for them. I'm, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure that's their name. Uh, and I feel more confident with that than I do with the folks who bought Zacon's list. Okay. Um, so Wendy says, my CVS told me that I needed to let the cashier know if I wanted to use a manufacturer's coupon, uh, that store coupons are automatic, but manufacturers are not automatic. Does this sound correct? No, Wendy, any digital coupon that you load is going to come off if it applies to the purchase. It's auto applied. The ones that you have to tell the cashier are your extra care bucks. They're going to hold in your account and the cashier has to hit apply, 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 apply on any extra care bucks that you have. But everything else, the computer will auto apply if you purchased those items. Um, so if you are worried that something didn't, that screen in CVS totally swivels and they can show it to you. And I, I have my store now just lets me hit apply, apply, apply. I don't know why. I'm, I'm half the time tell them apply them all because I just buy it all in one transaction. 
um, but that's how they handle it. So it's only extra care bucks though that is left to the cashier to have to deal with. Okay, y'all are so funny. We talked CVS all last week, but that's everybody's questions. Um, so Rose says, I had an unreal CVS checkout. The order totaled on its own. And I realized I lost three of my $10 in extra care bucks and a two off two palm olive. The assistant manager had never had that happen. I had to call CVS and they'd never heard of that happening, but you got them back. Um, wow. So Rose, when you say lost, I know in the past for me, how you'll see the coupons like go away and then come back in and then go away and come back in. When they first rolled that out for me, I it, the system basically thought that they had applied uh, and then they showed back up in my app the next day, but they did not come off of that purchase. So it was like the, the computer system thought they had been used and then realized that they had not been used, but I haven't had that happen in ages. I'm glad that you were able to get them back though. That would not make me very happy. That's a lot of money to have uh, lost. Okay, I'm gonna. I there are still um, some other questions coming in, but I will jump back to questions in a second. I want to get to meat uh, and have enough time to cover the rest of meat and produce, and then we'll go totally to questions. Um, so we hit on the same concept: buying in bulk and buying local if we can. But a few things on meat, uh, as I have the public side here to pick on them. Um, grocery stores love to do this, and I was going to see um, in my polling list people whether or not they even had it. Yes, they do. Um, Publix almost every week is so dependable for this. Really bad meat marketing. Um, so anytime that you're looking in your ad, I'm going to fold it down just so it's easier for me to hold up. These guys. Uh, see their, their salmon? Salmon, $5.99. They do this on purpose because they think that you're going to see that and be like, oh, salmon's five ninety nine. dollars Uh-uh. Those are each. That's a five ounce piece of salmon. Do the math on that, guys. And it's like you're paying $18 a pound. Never buy meat by the each. Whatever it is, never buy meat by the each. Always look for a per pound price. Um, and just automatically, uh-uh, if it says each, it is not on sale. It is going to add up to really bad math. Another one on that, you'll see when they sell hamburger patties already put together, uh, they usually sell them, and you have to do some math on this, but they'll sell, um, let's see, quarter pound patties is usually what it is. Quarter pound patties, 10 of them for $10. Well, quarter pound patty and 10 quarter pound patties, that is like two and a half pounds of meat once we do the math out and you're paying ten dollars for two and a half pounds of ground beef because that's really what it is um that's not a good price so and no no eaches ever fish is the big one especially for Publix. fish is the really big one um so do not let them um don't let them trick you into that. Uh, even for fish, that would still be a purchase that I'd make at the chef store. They sell frozen, they sell bulk. Um, so let's talk restaurant supply stores. We've talked this before as well. The chef store is in Columbia. There's one in Charlotte. There's one in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There's one in Dallas, Texas. Uh, they just built one outside of Charleston, and I think they do have plans to build others, but I know that those are the main chef store locations. Uh, anyone can shop there. You can pay with any credit card you want, and there's no membership fee. Now, other restaurant supply stores, there's Gordon Food Service, or GFS is what some people call them in their area. Also, Google restaurant supply stores in your area, and Google wholesale meats. Uh, I do not remember the name of it, but I shared it with someone, and if you're on tonight, I would love for you to stick it in, in the comments. Um, but after doing this Q&A a, a while back, I got a number of comments and basically spent a while Googling for people, and we found a great wholesale meat place in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, and a few other places in Florida just to help folks because there wasn't anything restaurant supply for you guys, um, but they, it does exist if you go wholesale meat. So Google that, uh, and you will be surprised what's in your area and who will sell to you. Now, if you can't find a thing, you have a local butcher, and I know this is very like 1850s but he is still there. So Google a butcher in your area. You want to go find them and you want to ask them, are there any farmers who will sell either straight to the butcher or straight to consumer? 
and you can buy a quarter cow, a half cow. You do not have to buy the whole cow. Most of the time they'll find other people. You don't want to buy a whole cow. That would take you about four years to eat. But a quarter cow is about mm, 150, 175 pounds of meat and it's going to last you a good chunk of the year, but you are going to get it at a flat price per pound. So when you do the math on that, you're going to end up paying four bucks for roasts and steaks. That's kind of four dollars, four fifty is the going price right now. It's crazy good. It's not necessarily a good price on ground beef, but you want to find a farmer who lets you pick the cuts that you want. And a lot of them do. There are a lot of farmers who do this. Um, so they will give you a form and you tell them, I want mostly roast, mostly steaks. I want this kind of cut. Obviously, you know, there's only one of certain types of cuts on, uh, on certain animals, but they will try to fit your request in. And then you're going to end up with some ground, but you can basically tell them, I don't want a hundred pounds of ground beef. I want other things and then let's fill with ground where we needed to. And in the end, you've got crazy good prices. So whether you find the remaining three people to do that with you, or you just go to a farm that they do that matching, uh, you're going to get a really good price. So direct to farm, still buying in bulk. Also look for a farm that goes ahead and vacuum seals it for you because that's going to save a lot of work. Um, we got some that was butcher paper wrapped, which is supposed to be okay to go in the freezer, but you're still talking about meat that's potentially going to be in the freezer for a while. 150 pounds of beef. You're not going to eat that in a day or two. Um, so you do still want it vacuum sealed, guys. Um, and I know that the butcher would say that butcher paper wrapped is okay, but not, not that long. So vacuum sealed is happy and it's going to save you a lot of work if they do that for you. Chicken plants will actually direct sell to you too. So if you, um, those of you who live near one, I know you're like, shh, don't tell. Um, but they do. So you can get really good prices if you are near a chicken, uh, Tyson chicken or Pilgrim's Pride. Um, they will direct sell to you and, um, raising chickens. Uh, works as well. We have uh, a number in our side yard, but we only use them for eggs. So uh, I am not going to do a Facebook Live on how to kill a chicken. I have no desire to go there. Um, we can do lots of how to cook one, but uh, uh, I'm not going there. So just so you kind of get that. Oh, and um, Bubbles is saying uh, that Gordon Food Service is in Florida. So if you're, depending on where you are, hopefully you will be able to find a Gordon Food Service in your area. Uh, and then, so let's talk meat uh, and another way to save. Uh, because I, I know I'm saying don't go to the grocery store, but depending on the store that you shop in, some of you already know, meat markdowns are a massive way to save money. And I say depending because you will never find markdown meat in Publix. It is not something that they do. Publix takes their markdown meat or meat that they would have marked down. They regrind it and it's called market ground beef and it is right in front of the butcher's window in Publix. So it's the cheapest ground meat that you'll find in Publix. It's market ground and actually you could find a pretty good deal. Look for meat that looks really red, doesn't have a lot of the white in it and that's going to be a lean steak possibly that was just reground into lean ground beef. Um, so you can get a pretty good deal. They're not going to tell you what lean fat it is because that's all they're doing is just regrinding all sorts of different uh, cuts of beef. Um, so it's not going to be one set. This is 93% lean kind of beef that you're used to. Uh, but that is Publix's market grind. So it's the only way that you're going to find markdown meat in Publix. And even then, it's not going to look like that. Now, other stores, you want to learn their schedule. So do they mark down on Mondays? Do they mark down every day of the week, but at a certain time? And try to be there for that moment. And then keep in mind that markdown meat must be frozen or eaten that day. That's the why it's been marked down. So do not get marked down meat in this massive quantity and then stick it in your fridge to deal with in a day or two. It is not going to be pretty. Uh, as long as you freeze it today, though, it's great. And it's a huge savings. So always looking for marked down meat. And then a big tip on that, if you find marked down London broil or um, a marked down hunk of meat, maybe you find a roast, 
most of these stores, so Bilo, Winn-Dixie, Kroger, they've got an in-house butcher. They'll actually grind that for you. So if you saw a markdown um, roast, and you're like, you know, we, we're not going to eat a roast. Ask them to grind it. And they can turn that markdown pork roast, or not pork roast, but markdown beef roast, pot roast is where my brain was going, into uh, ground beef and you're still gonna have it at that markdown price. They're not gonna re-up the price for you. So let them do some of the work. Um, the same if you find a mark, markdown steaks and you think, you know what, I don't want steaks. They'll even chop them into stew meat for you or fajita meat. I mean, guys, you can do this yourself too, but just letting you know that the store is there. Um, one other thing to mention on that being your own butcher basically is restaurant supply store wise. Um, when you go in, if you've if you've never been to the chef store, I actually did a video last year where I gave you a tour of it so you can pop back on our on, on the Facebook videos and find that. But um, when you head into the fresh meat section in the restaurant supply stores, they don't sell steaks already cut and ready to go. They do in the frozen section, but not in the fresh section. What they sell in the fresh section is a side of ribeye. And you're going to need to come home. They do have a boneless and a bone-in. Uh, I would recommend the boneless. It's going to make this slightly easier on you. But you're going to need to come home and cut that into steaks. Still an amazing price. So we did this, um, I guess, last month. Uh, we went, um, the chef store actually sent out coupons. It was a really high-value coupon uh, for, uh, well, a high-value purchase. But it was $25 off of a $200 purchase. And that's way out of our grocery budget. So I roped my sister-in-law into joining me so that the two of us could split that purchase and make it a little bit more affordable. And we grabbed for our portion, or a, a bit of our portion, one of those hunks of ribeye. Uh, it was at $4.49 a pound. Come home, I think my husband actually enjoyed this part, but his job was to cut it into steaks. And in doing that, we have ribeye steaks for $4.49 a pound. Um, so just to emphasize, um, since it fits in, and I happen to know that it's on the front of this ad, just to compare, it's half. And this is the sale price of this week in Publix. So you get what I'm saying here. <laughs> um, this isn't necessarily the deal when you start to think about getting them in bulk. Um, so it was $4.49, yes, but in the end it was really also 15 pounds um, ended up cutting into, if I can remember correctly, probably almost um, 17 to 18 steaks, the way that he cut them. So uh, we did end up having some extra that we kind of trimmed off from it and um, uh, boiled it down to make some beef broth and other things. But um, yeah, massive savings. So uh, bulk <laughs> whenever you can, and then don't be afraid to be your own butcher. YouTube, YouTube is your friend. How to cut a side of ribeye, you know, whatever. You'll be surprised. There's a video out there for it uh, so that you can figure it out. Uh, and Jessica says, my local Walmart marks down their meat every Monday morning, and I am their first thing to pick it over. Exactly. Find out when the markdown is, and that's like set an alarm. We are going to be there. I um. We do not live near Kroger, but I fully remember our Kroger where we used to live was also Monday morning, and I would be hauling out three kids. We are in our fun buggy, as they call it, and ready to go for whatever those markdowns might be. Uh, so some really good deals if you're willing to willing to grab them for sure. Um, let's see. So trying to catch back up, and I'll go back into questions here for a second. Um, uh, one, well, I guess one other thing before I jump into questions. I talked vacuum seal. Um, this is some of our green beans from Produce Week a few weeks back. Um, and I shared this a ton, but this is my rule of thumb, and it's a good rule of thumb. If it's going to be in the freezer longer than six weeks, you need to vacuum seal it. If it's going to be in the freezer less than six weeks, you can go Ziploc if you want, um, but you will never get the air sucked out of this in any way, shape, or form to equal this guy. It's just they're not going to compare at all. Uh, and it's the air that's the problem. So Ziploc could have the thickest, most amazing bag they've ever made. They can't get the air out. Um, so vacuum seal, guys. And it's just, it is, it's a really good way to save your produce a lot longer and your meat in the freezer for sure. Um, and then, again, Christopher saying, uh, or 
Christopher, Sarah, probably Sarah. Food Lion and Food City does markdowns each morning. I buy in the morning and take home and repackage and freeze. So yes, just make sure you're freezing that day. So just like she's doing. Um, and in terms of um, the chef store, so Stacy is mentioning, and I don't know if you're mentioning it in terms of the chef store or not, but I will say if, if you are or aren't, the chef store does run weekly sales. So it never hurts to pull up what their weekly sale flyer is for that week and see if it lines up with things that you need, um, like the 59 cent pound chicken that they ran a few weeks ago. I know I was super excited. That's when I did the video was just like, everybody needs to go. We all need chicken right now. Their sale flyers start on Monday. So a new one just came out today uh, and will run um, through next Sunday. So I actually just pulled it up and I'll share it with you guys just so you can kind of see. Not everything in here do, do you really want. You don't want, this is a six times four. So that's what they're telling you is there's six four pound bags of um, breaded Italian sticks. We don't need that. It really is restaurant supply. Um, but when you come down to it, there are still going to be some decent prices uh, across the board on other things. So you've got Applewood smoked ham um, for three oh nine a pound. This is like lunch meat. So if you compare that to lunch meat in the grocery store, here we go. Look at that. Uh, it's not as cheap as we saw before, but you were asking for prices on chicken breasts. So this is jumbo chicken breast, uh, double lobe, 40 pound box. It's $1.15 a pound. This is my store. They do vary. So if you are not in the Columbia area, you may actually find your store has it cheaper. Um, but I don't think you're going to find it for $1.15 a pound in any grocery stores right now uh, at all. Um, 50 pounds of potatoes is $25. That's a lot of potatoes for most of us, but it gives you an idea at least. Mostly, if you've never been to the chef store, you just want to focus on meat possibly some fresh produce, but mostly meat because the rest of this stuff, I don't need 400 liquid creamers. It may be a crazy good price, but that's a lot of liquid creamer. Um, they are really gearing towards restaurants. So focus on meat, focus on produce and go home. The rest of it's not really for you. Um, you will not use it in that quantity. I promise. Um, Okay, and then I don't want to look past Aldi or Lidl either. They do have good prices on their meat and their produce. Um, and that is just for folks that are in the area. Um, I Those are not stores that I ever go to. Uh, for me, buying grocery items, always cheaper in a grocery store. And Aldi and Lidl are going to use, always will use their meat and their produce deals and their dairy deals to get you in the door. They know that that's enough to get you in the door, um, but the rest of their prices don't compare. I know that sets some people off, um, but just putting it out there. So for me, I don't make a separate trip just for those items, and they definitely don't beat the $1.15 a pound in the chef's store when it comes down to meat. Um, so hopefully that helps, um, I don't know, clear up a question if you had it on that one. Are there different grades of food savers? Which models do I recommend for heavy use? So Lynn, we have Food Saver Vacuum Sealers, which is the name brand. Um, I, I do not recommend the little flat guys. Um, they do not suction down as hard as the ones that have uh, like kind of look like they're standing up. Um, so the little flat guys are the really cheap food savers compared to the taller models. But if you wait for a sale or a coupon, we see the taller ones um, still go to like 79, between 79 and 99 bucks. And that little flat guy is still going to, he's still going to be like 50. So if I would do the $29 more. It's definitely worth it for the taller ones um, than it is for that little tiny guy. Uh, and that's from experience. We've owned all of them, I feel like. Uh, and I have two big ones right now. Uh, and we will have them both going. When I hit the chef store and we do um, chicken and beef, it's going to take me a good 30 minutes to get it all up, but I'll have both vacuum sealers going. You do not need to own two. It's a long story as to how we came across two, but we own them, so we're going to use them. Uh, <laughs> you just need one, but that's the route I would go. I don't know about going off-brand on that. We don't really see a lot of competition for them. What we do go off-brand on, though, is the bags. Um, I do buy uh, just, it's a bulk 
food storage bags or food vacuum seal bags from Amazon. There's a number of different brands there, but just look for good ratings. And they're usually a lot cheaper than Food Saver, though they did just finish running a buy three and get three free sale. And when they run that, that's a great price. But if you run out and they're not running that, you just want to go with bulk off brand on Amazon and it works just fine. Um, so Laura is asking, what's the stock up price for bath tissue and paper towels? So Laura, it depends what your brand is. Um, but for me, I don't want to pay more than between $3.50 and $4 for a 12 double roll pack of um, toilet paper and um, about the same price for a six roll pack of paper towels. Uh, so a great example you can head into Walgreens through the end of this week and you can get um, Viva paper towels or no, sorry, I think it's Scott. Scott paper towels uh, and Cottonelle toilet paper all hit that mark because they are on, well, they're five bucks and then we have a $1.25 store coupon in the Walgreens monthly booklet and you have manufacturer's coupons that you can pair in. So you're going to get a $1.75 off and they cost five bucks. Um, so you can hit it. It's a very doable price, but that's my go-to price. Um, oh, and Kimberly's saying Food Lion has 18 count eggs for 69 cents. So Food Lion's trying to play all these games, uh, and they're coming in below the market price on eggs and hoping that that will um, definitely, you know, get you in the door. And it probably does for some. Eggs are the last thing I need. We actually had breakfast for dinner tonight just to eat up some eggs. Um, but that's the perk of having your own chickens. Uh, and if you live in the country, I highly recommend it. Okay. Aaron says, off topic, is there a way to get a physical receipt from Walgreens when you make an online order? Um, not to my knowledge, Aaron. I don't think that the stores can reprint it for you, uh, though I have not personally tried it. I have done some online orders, but not anything that I needed to submit and I bought it for, uh, which I'm guessing is why you're asking. You could ask. Could they could they reprint the receipt? But I don't think they're going to be able to. They don't have it linked into their system other than the fact that you just need to pick something up. Um, so I think you might be out maybe calling customer service and seeing if they could email you one and then potentially print that out and try to scan it. I don't know. Those, those would be the only two options that I could think of. Um, <laughs> and... Oh, yeah. So my husband's chiming in, Kimberly. Uh, yeah, you can't even keep chickens for that price. He's right. So 69 cents for 18 eggs. Uh, chickens do cost a little bit of money. We give them all of our scraps. We make them a lot cheaper that, that way, but they still need um, chicken food. So not going to ever be that cheap. Random question. Is it possible to save online mattress purchases such as Purple, or is it better and you save money buying them in store? So Paige, we've actually seen some really good mattress deals in the last few weeks. I would hold out if you could um, for the next three-day weekend is the big one. Uh, but yes, even Purple was on sale on the last one. Macy's ran some crazy good sales a couple of weeks ago, and Purple was included. Um, so watching for those, don't, don't forget to even... I, I think what Casper now is sold through Target. So there are some that you'll be able to get locally in reduced prices through other retailers, but don't look past some of the really big retailers who are now selling mattresses. So Macy's isn't where I would normally head to for a mattress, but they had like 60% off free shipping and they were offering free adjustable bed frames with any purchase over. I think the threshold for the free frame was 700 bucks, but that also got you free shipping and I mean, a purple mattress is in the thousand dollar range. So you were doing really good once you added all those things up. So keep an eye on Macy's uh, and then keep an eye on mattress companies um, that have to get rid of last year's models before next year's models come in. That's usually the best offers that you'll find on mattresses. Um, if you do, oh, there you go. So Paige is saying, if you do your online order in the store, you'll get a printed e-commerce receipt at Walgreens. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you'd be able to use it for Ibotta or not. You could definitely try um, and just see what they said. But I know that their um, camera system wants it to have that like receipt long shape to it versus it being like an eight and a half by 11. So if it's printing on the receipt shape, I think you're going to have a better chance of it going through for sure. Okay, um, to jump 
into, oh, so, so Casper mattresses, I'm seeing more questions come across. Can you buy Casper mattress at Target and still get the 5% off? So anything you buy, you're going to get that discount. And I was saying Casper and then watch it end up being purple. But one of the big ones um, is now on Target. I'm going to go check just so I'm not, not um, making things up. I even saw it in our store. Um, yeah, Target plus Casper. So they are. They're online. Uh, and yes, red card holders are going to get their 5% off this week. If you were shopping in store, I don't know if you guys caught this, um, but uh, in the Target app, when you open up the Target app, let's see, I'll show you. Uh, if you go to your wallet, then um, you're going to have some coupons in your wallet. And one of them for most everybody is, and it doesn't want to load for me because it doesn't think I have internet whenever I'm hooked to the computer, um, but you get the idea. Go to the wallet down at the bottom. Uh, under wallet is coupons that's going to pop up. Maybe, maybe not in this moment. And everyone that has a red card linked to their app gets an additional 5% off um, with that coupon um, with another coupon this week. So you're going to get 5% off with a coupon and 5% off with a red card. So it's kind of fun. That does not equal 10, just so you know. Uh, yeah, it doesn't think I have internet, even though I do. So we'll give up on him. Um, but just so you know where it is, the wallet's down the bottom. It really equals 5% and then 5% of what's left. And math, math, it's like 8 point something something percent in the end. But it's still pretty awesome. Uh, that's a one time. So make it good. <laughs> Whatever you're wanting to get in Target, make it good with your double 5% for sure. Um, Oh, uh, so Carrie, I'm Team Yellow in Ibotta. Um, just so if, if you're doing the, the team bonus this month, I don't know. Team Yellow. You didn't get to pick your color. I wouldn't have picked yellow personally, um, but it's it's okay. So anyone else that's Team Yellow, let's go. <laughs> and all the rest of you are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, but Ibotta is running a really big bonus, and then the team that gets the most gets to split the pot um, of what this bonus is. I think we're all going to probably end up with like a dollar, but hey, you, you can get excited. Um, so we've got, I'm new to couponing about six months in, and I mostly watch groups and go off their deals. Usually it's all body supplies, uh, like personal care supplies, and sometimes I make my own, and I want to do more food couponing. My issue is that I have all these coupons uh, here in front of me and no clue about how to go and find the awesome deals myself. Um, and how do I know what coupons I should get for the following week? So that's the problem. Uh, when you are following groups, and there's a ton of them on Facebook, first off, you're going to get a lot of folks who have 9 billion shampoos and keep buying them. I haven't figured that out. Um, but you're also left on your own. So I don't know if you've looked at the lists that are on Southern Savers or not, but that's probably the first place to get started is to pull up the store that you want. So go to southernsavers.com, pull up the store that you want, and then find the matchups um, for that store right there when you click on the name and you're going to see every deal that's currently running for that store this week. Um, so for example, I'm going to show you CVS because I spent some time tonight I love having teenagers, and uh, my teenager cooked our breakfast for dinner while I worked on some CBS hair care scenarios. Um, so um, oh, let's see. This is the CBS list on Southern Savers, and I'll make it as big as I can for you. Um, but I'm going to try to tell you everything that's on sale and um, give you scenarios to go with it. So these are all the deals and all the coupons. It's telling you where these coupons are from, organized by date or by printable. Um, so they're matched in. And I'm just scrolling down really quickly so that you can get the point. Um, but my goal is to give you some ideas, but then also to share anything else that folks share with me. So towards the bottom here is where it usually sticks in scenarios. Here we go. Hair care scenarios. So I made up three for you. This is using the big 10 off 40 hair care coupon that everyone's getting at CVS this week, or everyone that's not paperless is getting this week at CVS. Um, but it gives you an idea of what you could grab, the coupons to use as you head in, and then what those totals are going to be. So hopefully, if you're just getting started, Shannon, that's going to give you, um, you know, a good breakdown. You can sit here and click the boxes and make a shopping list and head straight to the store. So that's my goal is to make it as easy as possible for you uh, and put it all in one place to be able to make your shopping list is pretty sweet versus the Facebook groups where you're going to be sitting there and copying and pasting things to notes or writing it down furiously, however you look at that. 
Um, that is just the tricky part. Um, let's see. Um, oh, and yes, the extra percent off gen at Target does end on Saturday. So it's all week long and it's just for red card holders. So if you don't have a Target red card, you kind of missed out this week. The coupon's not going to load to your account if you get a red card this week. But it is an, a reminder that having a Target red card definitely, um, definitely helps. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, it's blue versus purple now, so yellows didn't make it. I went to upload a receipt earlier today, but I, I didn't go in to see where, where our standings were. Um, okay, so as we finish up, um, oh, you guys are so awesome. Thank you. Oh, my goal is to be helpful. That's that's really the, the, ultimate, the ultimate goal for all of us here, uh, and the list that we're making and the folks that help me make those lists. So I'm glad that you guys find them helpful too. Um, okay, we're at the 9.30 mark. Um, we definitely hit meat and produce well. Uh, to recap, it's bulk and it's local as much as you can. It's vacuum sealer and freezers as well, which I know some of us don't have. If you don't have those things, then the best thing you can do is staying in season, and some of that might be tricky during the, the winter, but in season and still trying to get out of the grocery store as much as you can. Even if it's a local corner produce stand and haggling them down to the price that you know is good. So uh, we put a link in at the beginning. It's probably way down in the comments now, but using that um, so.savers.me slash market, uh, just no vowels in the savers, uh, and pulling up that list to see what the current price is and then haggling them down. So huge on produce. Produce is for us. Um, we spend $25 every other week at our co-op, really twice a month. So $50 of produce a month out of our budget, but we're talking way more than I could ever come home with from the grocery store. If I were to try to buy what I got from co-op in a grocery store, it probably would equal at least 100 to 125 a month, easily double, if not more. Um, so hands down, you got to try it. Google for a co-op in your area, Google for a CSA farm in your area, and then Google for a restaurant supply store so that you can start to get your meat there too. So I know it's changing up your habits. Meat, if you're buying it in bulk, you're gonna go like once every two months. So this isn't a, oh, now I have a whole nother store to go to, but it's gonna save you a massive amount of money. So, you know, just to put the chicken sale that I showed at the chef store this week into perspective, 40 pounds of chicken at $1.15 a pound really means that you're going to pay about 44 bucks for 40 pounds of chicken. You can't do that in the grocery store. So just try it. You're going to like it. You might get slightly addicted to the chef store or the restaurant supply store, but uh, you're going to like the prices, I promise. So um, thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, and hopefully I caught everybody's questions. I see some more coming in on the red card. Um, so Carrie, that Target red card is... Uh, Target's debit card, basically, that's what I would recommend. You get 5% off of every purchase that you make, and it links straight to your checking account. You can do it at the register, and you're good to go. I recommend, actually, that you guys do at the register um, so that you uh, don't have any... Uh, I don't, I don't know. The reason really isn't... It's not going to save you any more money to do it in the register. It's that the, the cashier... You are going to make their day if you sign up for a red card at the register because they get a little tiny kickback. They get a little bonus and they're required to ask everybody and their mother whether or not they have a red card. Um, so when you finally turn and say, yes, I want one, you're just going to see this little bright light come over them. Um, so do that. If you want a red card, sign up for it in the store and make them happy. Uh, I can guarantee you it'll make their their moment, if not their day, that you did it. Uh, and, yet, and yes, we do the debit card version. We do not do the credit card version. Uh, you get the same discount. So there's no reason not to just do the debit card and hopefully you're good. So Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pop off. We'll be back same time, Monday night, always at 8.30 Eastern. So thanks for joining me tonight. Hopefully this was helpful. Share it with friends who need to be saving and um, get them to join us next week too. So you guys have a great week. I'll pop in on Wednesday with our grocery deals uh, as we get home from the store. So uh, I'll talk to you again soon.